putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Man is offensive. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. All man, total alpha male, too. Man is offensive, at least according to feminist, misandrist, people who hate men. But what's funny is all these feminists that hate men, they tend to find one and marry them. <laughs> who knew? Glad you guys are back. It's Kevin Jackson Show, kjradio.com, 844-551-8255. Attacking men. That's been the, that's been the, the major thing. I'm giving a speech to some uh, youngsters, about a thousand youngsters here in April, uh, college kids. And I'm, I'm warning the young girls that what's happening in this feminist movement is ruining their prospects for a very good future. Because what they're doing is they're they're eradicating the gene pool. Number one, these feminists are uh, making men more feminine. They're uh, what do they call it, effeminate, yeah, feminizing <laughs> these men. Men don't even know what to be. They become metrosexuals. They become. There's a blurred line between men and women now. There really is, because men are afraid to be men. You can't have locker room talk anymore. You, by, by the way, women can have locker room talk all they want. They can talk about uh, grabbing men by the naughty bits. They can talk about how, you know, boorish their man behaves. They can talk about all the nasty things that men do. But don't you dare talk about them. Don't you call a woman out of her name or whatever else. But they can call men whatever they choose. And white guys. Oh, Lord. When I talk to these white, these white students, I'm going to say white boys in the audience, young men, you have the bleakest future of all. And let me paint a picture for you. It ain't good. Look at a third grader, you know, that doesn't know how to paint painting, because that's what the picture I'm going to paint for you. It's not good. It's not something you will even put in the scrapbook. It's a bad future. Black men? Really? Do you really think you, that they're treating black men like men? Black men are babies. They They get to go out impregnate multiple women, have as many kids as they want, and society says, we'll take care of Ray Ray's kids. It's okay. Don't worry about being responsible. Don't worry about being a father. Don't worry about growing up black men. Don't ever worry about becoming a man. Don't worry about becoming a father and actually showing somebody how to become a good man. Don't worry about that. The women got you. Yeah, that's that's good, right? Anyway, here's this chick talking about banning man from the lingo. A writing guide at Purdue University accredited school apparently tells students to avoid words like mailman and mankind in order to have, quote, non-sexist, non-biased writing. Kathy Aru is founder and publisher of Catalina Magazine, and we think she agrees, and she joins us tonight. Kathy, it's great to see you. Hi, good to see you. I, I got to say, there, there's kind of a basic irony here. I mean, you're what? lecturing us about sexism while you're sitting right now in Manhattan. <gasps> Manhattan. We need to rename the city then. Um, the, yeah. the, the, the Big Apple. The Big Apple would be less offensive. So I feel that I'm sitting in the Big Apple, not Manhattan. OK, but why stop there? Why should the post office deliver mail? I know. Well, it's spelled M-A-I-L, so that's okay. If it's M-A-L-E, no, then no, no. there's a problem. Homonyms count, and this applies to email, too, because it's not I, about spelling. It's about being gender inclusive, right. and mail is offensive. We just learned that. So. Well, well, no, I don't think they're including that, but they are saying that society has changed and times are changing, and we don't want to be offensive in our language. And they're trying to be non-sexist and non-biased, and that means trying to take the word man out. So instead of man-made, it would be synthetic. So um, instead of mailman, it would be mail carrier. So there's many ways to go around it. Instead of humanity, you should say people. But so, mail um, carrier still has mail in it. So you have It's kind of a fake. Oh, but that's a judge. A package I mean, carrier. Well, I mean, wait, we can on. come up with so many other terms uh, that are less saying. offensive. Yeah. You might still offend dyslexics. You can change a vowel, but it sounds the same. It has that dreaded word that sends people shrieking for their safe spaces, male. Well, they're saying man. Man is the word that they're trying to avoid. They're saying that the word man is associated with adult men and as opposed to just humanity or humans. So um, they're trying to avoid the word man. So as, if we can eliminate that word, then things would be much better and people would be less offended. Believe it or not, folks. 
There are people that sit around thinking about this kind of crap. Welcome back. It's Kevin Jackson who you're listening to. I am a human. Yeah. It's funny. She says you could do things like human or humankind. Wait a minute. It still has man in it. What do you call a manatee? A womanity? A chickity? <laughs> I'd call bull crap on this, except I can't be gender specific in my bovine reference lest these people go crazy. According to the Purdue Owl Writing Guide, we are no longer allowed to refer to a congressman as a congressman simply uh, because the word includes the term man. You can no longer reference police and fire personnel as firemen or policemen. They specifically outline biased language. I, wa- I want you to list- look at these. This is amazing to me. They said this. Avoid language that is stereotypical or biased in any way. Biased language frequently occurs with gender but can also offend groups of people based on sexual orientation, ethnicity, here it comes, political interest, or race. Okay, man, I get it. Oops, I mean, dude. I, oh, sorry, I meant person, person, person. I get it. I get it, person. So what do I do with bro? See, you white folks don't have to think about it. I have to go a little deeper than some of you but what do I do with bro see because bro has familial as well as racial implications what what's up brother does my sister get mad and sue me particularly if my sister is my former bro who I'm not recognizing her transformation right and that has a double uh, you know cloud on it when you're black what's up sis what's up bro Hmm. Gender specific. I'm guessing in California, one could get arrested by referring to one's parents by their gender. You know, hey, father, son, please do not call me father. We are a genderless society here in California, whether it's your other part, my significant other who happens to be your other parental unit. (laughs) And can you imagine the conversations you have to have around these clowns? Wow. And what if a fa- what if a child, I guess it's still okay to say child, what if a child has two mothers and refers to one of his mothers as father? Hmm. You think about that one? Yeah. I feel like uh, Jeffrey Bardem in No Country for Good Men when he's leaving that that thing and he's like, you yeah, don't don't put that coin in the pocket with the other po- coin, other coins. That's your lucky coin. <laughs> <You know? laughs> We got the added twist, folks, of asking to be called on, you know, tell, calling people by how they identify. You could walk up to some dude and say, hey, excuse me, sir. And you go, I don't feel like a sir, but you look like a sir. You're built like a lumberjack. You got a beard that would make, you know, Rasputin jealous. What are you talking about? You're not a sir. How will you know how a person identifies unless you've spoken to them or God forbid you've called him by the wrong pronoun. Ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. I'm not a ma'am. I've heard women go, I'll say, excuse me, miss. It's Mrs. And they show the big fat diamond ring. It's Mrs. Oh, sorry. Okay, Mrs. Um, You know, I mean, I've I've had those types of run-ins with people, which I find kind of interesting because, you know, I'm I'm Mrs. And look at my big fat ring. I've got a man. He, somebody wanted to marry me. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Are there going to be pronoun police? I'm just curious. What about hotlines for when somebody performs the egregious act of calling someone a sir or a him when it's a a woman? Huh? In the future, will you get arrested for the improper use of gender programs? Hmm. It won't. It may not be as bad as you think, though. You know, if you were to get arrested, think about it this way. So you're an inmate or an inmate. You go to jail. An inmate says to you, so I'm in for murder. What about you? And you're the inmate and you say, I'm in for asking a lesbian, sir, what time is it? Inmate that asks you the question goes, dang, dude, you are bad to the bone. See, you think that that's going to get you like beat up in prison. Now people will be like, dude, man, you did that. What? Son, that's big pimping right there. So she went through a few examples. Mankind, call it humanity, people, 
human beings. It's still got man in it. I didn't figure it. Or she says, man's achievements and alternative is human achievements, man-made, synthetic. See, I have a problem with man-made because what if it is man-made? What, what if a dude made it? You, you know, I don't want to give it to everybody. No, if it's man-made, I did it. Man hours, there needs to be staff hours. Yeah, by the way, in that regard, we all know a woman hour is worth less than a man hour. <laughs> One would think women would love to be included with man hour. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.